Forbes contributor. And I had the pleasure now of speaking with George Cambosis Jr., a top lightweight contender. And we're going to talk about what's going on in his career, what he's looking forward to and all that. How are you doing today, George? Bro, and I'm, I'm going great, man. Uh, it's a pleasure, pleasure to be on. Absolutely. And uh, it's a very exciting time. You, you've heard uh, a lot of stuff going on, so it's exciting. Yeah, man, it, it's a lot going on right now. Um, well, first and foremost, let's just talk. I mean, you're 17 and 0, coming off an absolute mauling of Richard Pena in your last fight back in June. So, how soon do you think you might be ready to get back in the ring? I mean, right now you're number three in the IBF, number eight in the W with the WBO. How soon do you think you might be able to jump in the ring? Look, I've, I've uh, wanted to fight in November, December. I want to have one more fight this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I've already had two this year, so uh, definitely one more this year. We want to, we want to uh, be back in that in that ring. Yeah, for sure. Now uh, I know you've been uh, training in down in Florida, right? And uh, so this is is this a little bit of a new uh, twist or change for you? Kind of talk a little bit about you know how training has been lately and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, look, my, my last camp was in Florida. Um, I'm at Rio Centeno. Awesome, awesome uh, camp. I mean, great facilities. We put in a lot, a lot of work, and we had, and it paid off in that in that Athens fight. Um, originally, I was I was in camp with Pacquiao. I've uh, done all the camps in Pacquiao in Los Angeles. Um, I needed a change. I needed something better for myself to fully focus on my career. Um, yeah. To become a, a contender chasing a world title, not just Pacquiao sparring partner. But all the rounds I did do with Pacquiao has served me very, very well, and something I will never forget. Yeah, I was going to ask you that, man, because, I mean, you were like uh, chief sparring partners and kind of what I uh, what I gathered is, you know, Manny really, really valued having you there uh, just because of the skill level, the speed. So you said, you you know, like what some like if you if you could pick one thing and say, I learned this most from my time sparring with Manny, what would you say that is? It's hard to pinpoint the exact. You know, my main thing you learn, but I think the, the discipline he has. You know, I'm, I'm a very disciplined fighter, very um, focused fighter. But the discipline I, I learned from him, him being a eight-time world champion, thirteen, uh, you know, eight divisions, thirteen-time world champion. I mean, just to see the way he continually grinds hard to continue pushing hard um, was very motivating for myself. So I picked up a lot of lot of little things like that in in training. Um, you know what I mean? So, so that served me well. That's three camps I've done with him, three world title training camps alongside, uh, alongside him as his chief sparring partner. So, you know, it's a lot of rounds, 250 plus rounds with, with an all time great. Uh, I think the, the best sapper ever. You know I mean? yeah. So, we're ready for, for anybody. Yeah, I mean, that that's you, it's really hard. You can't put a value on what that does, you know. Uh, and the great thing is you're only 26 years old, you know, so you're still, like uh, many people would say, approaching the prime of your career. So I totally understand you doing that. I got to ask you though, because a mutual friend of ours said, I needed to ask you about Pacquiao's dog. <laughs> yeah, he's still, he's still going on. He's still there. The yeah. same dog that was, uh, you would have seen in the 24 sevens uh, years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, he's still there. He's still running around the laps and, and, and following us as we're running. So, yeah, does he attack? Does he attack the training partners and stuff sometimes? <laughs> he does go off. He, he does like to uh, have a nip at a few people. <laughs> he, never, he never attacked me. I think he knew that. All right, I can't, I can't, I can't attack uh, this guy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty. No, he, that's, he was cool. He was really cool. Yeah, that's pretty funny, man. Now, what's really one of the biggest things that's going on right now is uh, Bob Arum, who uh, you know you're you're with uh, top rank. And, um, you know, he's one of the biggest cash cows right now. He's fighting currently at lightweight, lightweight, but he's come up from uh, other weight classes. Vasil Womachenko, we just saw him uh, put together a really, I think, uh, balanced performance against Luke Campbell and getting that unanimous decision. But Bob Arum, you know, a lot of times fighters have to, like, drum up their own uh, uh, their, you know, drum up their own conversation. But Bob Arum literally mentioned your name and said that you are possible next, you know, opponent for Lomachenko. So tell me a little bit about that, your interest in that fight and the whole nine. Look, everything has come from Bob Arum. I mean, mm -hmm. Bob Arum is Lomachenko's boss. Mm -hmm. It's coming from the boss. It's not coming from 
from me, not coming from my team. I mean, we're sitting number three. We were going to continue pushing and, and, and moving our way up the ladder till we got our shot. But everything that's been said is coming from Bob Arum. Mm-hmm. Um, I welcome it with, with open arms. You know, I mean, if it does happen, mm-hmm. I mean, there's, there's no stepping back for me. I mean, it's, you want to fight the best. You want to beat the best. You want to challenge yourself. And I welcome it with open arms. But look, Bob, um, we had a very interesting uh, breakfast mm-hmm. with my promoter, Lou Bella in California, with Bob Arum as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, my manager Peter Kahn, my trainer Javier Centeno, there's a lot, a lot of interesting stuff spoken about, a lot of interesting talk and one of the main things that Bob was really, really excited about was bringing a big super fight back to Australia. Mm-hmm. If there's one person that, that can generate the, the, the fans and, and really do something here in Australia is myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, taking a fight to, to Melbourne mm-hmm. with 80,000 people in Etihad Stadium, mm-hmm. we've got to remember that Melbourne is the second biggest uh, city outside of Athens with Greek population. Right. And me being such a proud Greek, I mean, that, that venue is perfectly um, set for Cambodia Lomachenko if it does end up happening. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, we've already seen evidence of it being when Pacquiao, and I, I think you were part of that training camp, right, yeah. when he fought Jeff Horn. So that place was packed. And it was a huge, I mean, if you saw the domestic, when I say domestic, I'm talking about the United States numbers were huge, even though the fight was in Australia. So the stadium itself was packed in Australia. And not only that, the numbers were great in the United States in terms of television and that sort of thing. So obviously Lomachenko is a huge star and you're a huge uh, uh, star in, in, in Australia and with the Greek community. And then on top of that, you're a legitimate contender because you're uh, undefeated. I kind of see what you're saying. You're saying that this could be a huge event in Australia and just for boxing overall, correct? Yeah, definitely. This is a huge event. If it was, if it was to go ahead, um, you got to remember that Pacquiao, Pacquiao Horn uh, filled out a stadium, generated yeah. a lot, a lot of money to the government, a lot of money to, to boxing in Australia. Um, Holly Holmes and Ronda Rousey. Yeah. That, that fight took place at Etihad Stadium, 80,000 people to watch, yeah. watch that fight. So Melbourne is, is I mean, the Australian capital of, of, of sports. They love their sports. When you put that in the mix there, you put the Australian public in the mix and you put all the Greeks down there, um, you know, I mean, it's huge. And I had a very uh, interesting call uh, a day ago. Once all the news started breaking from a government official in Melbourne mm-hmm. that said this fight, if it was to take place, would bring hundreds of, of millions of dollars of tourism and money into the government in Melbourne. So there is a lot of interest, not only from boxing, not, a, not only from the worldwide um, you know, I mean, fans that are starting to pick up on, on this, on this uh, thing that, that could be happening. But mm-hmm. the government is, is definitely taking a lot of interest. So that's, that's very exciting. But going yes. back to, going back to uh, that meeting with, with Bob Arum and obviously mm-hmm. the Bella, and obviously the photo is, is, is on social media was put up. The funny thing was, Teofimo Lopez, his father actually took that photo. They yeah. were there, and um, I mean, we had a chat w- with a chat with him because we were all there for the uh, Comi um, Beltran fight. Right. So we had a chat, and that, that's the exciting thing being um, being amongst that whole. Um, you know, I mean, well, obviously, promotional company with Lou DeBella and Bob Arum. They all work together. Um, I seen something today about Devin Haney. I mean, yeah. coming and, and saying, "Oh, you know, I mean, he's going to fight him. He's not fighting me." Um, well. I mean, when, when, when you're surrounded by so many good fighters and big fights can happen, I mean, you're not an outcast on the other side. Right, right. And I mean, you're in a good position, like you were saying. Yeah, you, you're in a good position because you were saying you, you could fight any of those guys. Yeah, definitely. Know? Look, I, I know my belief. I know, I know what, what, I, what I present. And, um, you know, I mean, like I said, I, I don't take no step back from, from anybody. We're ready for, for anyone. If this Cambosis Lomachenko fight presents itself, uh, we'll definitely uh, – you know, we'll open it with, with, with walking with open arms and, um, I mean, show what, what we possess. Yeah, if, if anybody, if you've never seen Cam, George Cambosis fight, you, you'll know one thing. He does not lack confidence. <laughs> he does not lack confidence. <laughs> the hand speed on the inside, you can tell he totally believes in the hand speed and he totally believes in the power. So uh, I think it's an interesting, anytime you have fast hands, you got a chance against just about everybody, you know. Yeah, of course. When, you, when you're very explosive and you've got fast hands and you move well um, and you can see yourself in, in, in very good positions, mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, 
the the shots will come and you can look it's it's boxing it's, it's fighting it only takes one good shot to to put no matter who it is and look Lomachenko is pound for pound number one mm -hmm. i mean there's no denying it he, he's he's the top dog in the uh in the world uh, but i know he's very smart too because if he does take this fight in melbourne he's gonna make double than whatever as, as a purse compared to whatever he's made before there is some serious money for him to make and i'm sure he, he likes money like everybody else so absolutely uh, that, that that there as well with the challenge of, of fighting ferocious cambosis um could definitely draw him in but his own boss is very excited about it yeah and i th i think that speaks volumes the fact that bob aram is the one that's mentioning your name uh speaks volumes i mean Bob Aram didn't say Devin Haney is the is, is the next guy for Vasil Lomachenko, and he could have easily have said that. Uh, but I think Bob obviously is also a very smart man, and he also knows that there's tons of money to be made in Australia as well. So uh, if you were to gauge, and I know obviously this is not in solely your decision, but if you were to gauge the chances of you fighting Lomachenko in December, what would you say is it you, do you think it's 50 50 70 percent which way are you leaning look in my mind i mean i'm, I'm a fighter i know what, what, what i have you know what i mean in my uh in my confidence in myself in my belief of, of what i bring to the ring you know what i mean people are going to see it as as lomachik is going to be too good they're, they're going to say that you know i mean canvas is the underdog he's going to he's he's going to get better they can say whatever they want at the end of the day it's me that's going to prepare for, for for the fight prepare for the war and um I mean, confidence-wise, I know I'm going to beat him and come to the come to the ring. All I got to do is, is, is show it, put it all together. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a great fight. It's a great fight for the fans. I mean, Lomachenko. I mean, I got I definitely got the speed on Lomachenko. He moves great. So do I. I move very very well. Um, Punching-wise, I believe I'm the bigger puncher. I'm the more explosive puncher. He likes to break his guys down. I like to catch my guys and finish them off as early as I can. So this this is a great fight if it was to take place. And yeah. While in front of eighty thousand people. Uh, in a stadium i know lama has never fought in front of that nah it's it's and, and you know i think honestly him going to fight lou uh lou campbell in the uk i think that the atmosphere there and the crowd that they were able to generate actually bodes well for him kind of barnstorming in this way and going to fighters uh countries to fight them and australia this is such a huge opportunity because of the venue because yeah. of your heritage the dual heritage there you know it's it's such a it, it's such a huge deal for him uh so i can definitely see him taking the fight and saying that this is what he wants to do but you say that you if you fight lomachenko you you're confident you win the fight yes a hundred percent no doubt about it yeah you think you can stop lomachenko i believe i can land that shot and seriously hurt him and put him away all right he, he beat before people were looking at him like he's this unbeatable um fighting machine mm -hmm. he's been beat before salido i mean an agent salido beat him beat him up i mean pushed him and and, and closed his style up and didn't let him do anything that he, that he wanted to do so um i mean yeah definitely definitely that's why we're in the game we're in the game to, to fight the best to beat the best and like i said all respect to him he's the number one pound for pound but if this fight does go ahead ahead there will be uh there'll be a different number one pound for pound well wow, you got a lot of confidence that's what you got to have uh as competing on this level if you don't believe nobody else will so you got to do it got to do it so man i i um i can't wait i'm 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 hoping <laughs> i'm hoping that it's i hope i'm hoping that it happens for sure i would love to see it i think it's a fantastic fight for boxing i think it's a fantastic fight for you lomachenko everybody involved i'm really i really am hoping that it happens so uh do you have an idea of when we might know a confirmation or i mean because i'm assuming if the fight's in december eight week training camp you, you know somebody's got to know something pretty soon look i got a really good team um obviously my manager Petty Khan, my promoter Lou Bella, they're gonna do all the groundwork they're gonna they're gonna sit there and work everything out for me i'm, I'm a, pro, a professional athlete mm -hmm. and when i stay in the gym day in day out i'm not the kind of guy that will, will fight and have two months off three months off so if you gave me a week you know, i'm ready i'm ready to fight there's no yeah. there's no problem so whenever they say they say november they say december if they say tomorrow we're ready 
Yeah. So if when the if you get get do get the fight, are you going to train in Florida or are you going to train in Australia? I'll be in Florida. I'll okay. be that, that's where my camp. No matter what fight I get, I mean that's that's where my camp is based at. Right. Now. Awesome. Okay. All right, George, man, I appreciate your time so much, man. Like I said, looking forward to the fight, hoping that it happens. And I'll be, I hope to get an opportunity to talk to you again uh, in between that time. Yeah, definitely. Appreciate Brian, your time. And uh, I'm sure we're going to chat again. Yep. Yep. I appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you.